I'm now going to be showing you the new features of the Ecosystem Painter and what has happened to the Ecosystem Selector. Uh, ecosystem Selection used to be uh, a tool of the Ecosystem Selector up the top of the screen uh, in the top toolbar. Uh, that is now integrated into the Global Ecosystem or the Ecosystem Painter, depending on whether or not you're painting on, uh, on a material using the brushes uh, or just using the Global System. Uh, so I'm going to add uh, just a height field terrain and scale it down a bit and give us a little bit of a landscape in there. And zoom into it. And I'm going to select the terrain and just add a material to it. Let me just use the grass variations. We can edit the material, and add an ecosystem, go ahead and uh, select from the plant species. And we're just going to drag a couple into the list. Uh, when the window comes up here, I'll go ahead and I just add a plum tree, and then I'll go over to the maple and just add a few of these in here. Just dragging and dropping uh, makes the process a lot quicker. We can also add, uh, say, the alder late spring, uh, slightly higher res, uh, up to about 400,000 polys, it says, per tree. So it does take a little longer to load. And when we're finished making our selections, I am also going to add the sun ratio as well. Add a little more variation to that. And then we can just click OK. Uh, and now we could keep this window open if we wanted and edit the material and the ecosystem this way. Uh, you'll find there are two windows now, uh, the ecosystem painter and also the eco painter brush editor. Uh, now, with the addition of so many features, this can be a little overwhelming uh, at first. Uh, but we have a button here to show the editor in the lower right. Uh, we can choose from the preset brushes. Uh, with the version I was using, I had to load in uh, the brushes from the bottom, load a brush, and then there was a collection for eco brushes. So then I just went in and added all of the brushes from that collection into it. Uh, just in case your copy of view didn't come preloaded with those. It might just be a pre-release thing. Um, so what we can do is select if we wanted to populate, select the populate brush. And then if we take a look in the editor, we're going to find the effectors. So that's uh, going to populate the area with these instances. Now I have the editors taking up a very large portion of the screen. Uh, so we could just close out the editor, or maybe move some of these panels in this case. I could also move them to my other screen. Uh, if I was working at normal resolutions, uh, this wouldn't be that much of an issue. Uh, so we still have a lot of the same features that were there in previous versions. Uh, pretty much all the same features are still available uh, for the most part, uh, but now we can edit and customize brushes. So if we take a look, uh, go to the eraser, we can see the effector is the eraser. So we can add additional effectors. Um, if we click over here, uh, just above where the little trash can is for the what's typically a new document type of icon. Uh, we can choose from this list uh, to be able to manipulate these instances essentially as if they were particles. Uh, so in a way this is, these are particle effectors. So what we could do is let's just select a different brush. We're going to go to the attractor. And this is happening kind of slowly on the screen. If I turn off the airbrush style, it should behave a little quicker. So what I'm essentially doing is just taking those particle points and the instance points and drawing them to each other towards the center of the brush, which is pretty neat. And that's the attract effector. And you can combine multiple effectors. Uh, you could have the color change along with um, the attraction being made. So if you wanted to group certain plants together and also color them at the same time, we could add 
uh, coloring to this. It does appear to be slowing things down a little bit. But the color does change just slightly. And it may work better in a top view, which the brushes do tend to work a little better in the top view. So I'm going to change the color to kind of a dark blue. Let's see how well that shows up. And it looks like there's a, a little bit of a problem here with using the airbrush style on that. So just reselecting the preset, I'm going to turn off the airbrush style, just because the flow is not very strong uh, in this case. We could also lean, and I may need to just change my display quality. So I'm going to go down to my list. And we can see that most of the objects are actually closer to the billboard size and not the shaded billboard. Uh, but I'm going to switch these over to the smooth shaded so that we can actually see uh, the tilting better, or the leaning. So that just causes a rotation of the instance, the particle instance. Uh, jitter just kind of mixes them around a bit. Uh, jitter orientation will spin them. Uh, we could select or just click on the instance and kind of move it. There's also options uh, in the editor to hunk the underlying object so it kind of stays fixed onto the surface, the normal, uh, that it's being painted onto. And then we can also interactively move the instances uh, while painting. Uh, so drag, it's kind of the same thing, but it's more of a smearing of the instances uh, instead of just grabbing everything and kind of shifting it over. And then, of course, uh, scaling. And these are a lot of features that were available in the previous uh, version. It looks like the airbrush style is kind of fixed for this. Um, and even with the flow set really high, it's not uh, causing a whole lot of an effect. Maybe if we bump up the flow to 300, uh, it might not accept that value higher than 100. So that one maybe needs a little bit of work, unless uh, what you could do is increase the scale, and it might be because of the billboard mode and the fact I'm recording at the same time. Um, but because it's such a slow moving scale change, um, if we go ahead and increase the scale, we should uh, be able to raise those up or shrink them a little faster within that time. We can also see that this uh, parameter is basically published. Uh, so if we publish these parameters, they will show up as additional parameters uh, within the brush preset, the brush panel, Ecosystem Painter, uh, so that if you wanted to close out the editor, it'd be a little easier to do. Uh, we can also set up the environment constraints, which was added a couple of versions ago. So based on orientation, the slope, and altitude constraints um, of the surface normal that's being painted on. Uh, so going back, there's also the magnet and... Uh, anytime you make a change to a brush, it will ask if you want to update and save, and I prefer to just create new brushes when I do that. Uh, one thing I've noticed is sometimes when you click, like in this case, I have uh, stopped clicking, but the magnet tool is still uh, being applied, so when I click again, it turns off. And in this case, also, it managed to populate an ecosystem. Um, looks like a little bit of a, <laughs> a bug there which I have not seen yet. Uh, so there might be a little more work that needs to be done. Um, but just want to show you some of the other um, brushes or effectors. And one is the ability to basically align everything to a grid, uh, which would be similar to uh, the option of alignment of the instance. Uh, 
in increasing, say, the sampling quality. So in a way, it kind of aligns it to that grid. Uh, raking it will create rows of instances. And I think my display is just having a little trouble because uh, the recording. So I'm going to just set this to billboard. We could also set the global ecosystem quality to billboard from display ecosystem preview and then the quality limit if you wanted to add a limit to it to kind of speed things up but this will essentially just uh, create that raked effect where it'll group things into rows so you can mix and match uh, all these effectors uh, to manipulate uh, populated or painted ecosystems the tornado is kind of cool it'll uh, depending on the hug setting can lift them off uh, and that's something that can be animated with an effector as well onto the particles which we'll take a look at in another section so the last setting we're going to look at is the integration of the ecosystem selections in the selector tool um, so what we can do is up at the top select ecosystem instances uh, which is right next to the brush and now we have a new selection tool and we can use the ecosystem population, um, either select a bit of everything, so all the different types of instances in the eco population list, uh, or only select the selected items. So now if I use the select instance tool and brush over the area, it's only going to select the alders because that is what's selected. We can switch over to the maple tree and add to the selection. We could switch it over to deselect and reverse that. Uh, so once we have a selection, we can create a new selection. So then we can restore that at any time. Uh, we can create new ones, add to them, uh, and create a list of selections we can load up. Or when we are painting, we can restrict the selection based uh, or restrict the manipulation of the brush based on that selection. So if I was to, let's see, the lean I'm not sure will show uh, with this preview on. I'll just go ahead and set it to rake. And uh, up at the top, we can restrict to the selected instances. So now only the instances uh, that are selected should be affected. And that was my fault. Uh, that's actually because I clicked the wrong button on top. Uh, the first one is restrict the selected object, which would be the terrain. Uh, the one next to uh, the underlying object is restricting to the selected instances. But it looks like everything is selected right now. So I'm going to deselect. Uh, so everything is deselected. And what I'm going to do is double click on the name or the 306 items. Uh, that's part of the selection and now we can see 306 are selected and now we can restrict the brush to that selection uh, so using a selection like that uh, is kind of a way to create a mask for painting on specific areas it's also really nice to be able to now manipulate the re or restrict the selections based on the population list and then if we go back uh, to the selection we can still get back the manipulate options, uh, which were part of the uh, earlier ecosystem selector, the instance selector. So now I have the selection of 306 objects. I can convert them to objects from instances. I can move them between ecosystems, global ecosystem, or whatever material ecosystems are in the scene. Or I can take all of those instances and convert them to uh, the same type of instance. So convert them all to plum tree, maple tree, uh, the alder, the sun or asia, depending on what populations are in the scene or what instances are available in the scene. And now with the manipulate option turned on, I can also uh, go over and with the gizmo mode um, set to local, I can scale up the instances. So we still have the ability to manipulate them, uh, move them around with the gizmo, scale them. Uh, if it's set to the local mode it will scale based on the instance position otherwise in global mode 
Uh, it looks like it'll still do the individual instances. Before it would take um, all of them and scale them as a single object. Uh, so now it looks like it doesn't really matter which uh, position or coordinate system you're using, it will scale them based on their individual uh, point in their position. You could, of course, if you wanted to scale them all together, convert them to objects, and then you should be able to, uh, once they're selected and once all that's converted, um, scale it up or group them and scale them. So we could group, and scale, ungroup, right click, revert to instances. Uh, so some very cool new tools added to the painter and uh, the new combination with the instance selector. Uh, powerful new tools. Uh, another feature I want to mention, uh, in case you missed it, and I just have uh, the ecosystem painter up uh, with a couple items in the list here. Uh, if you look over in the brush editor uh, towards the bottom, uh, there's now a new mask section. So this works uh, like the terrain editor mask if you worked with uh, that brush setting before. Uh, what we can do is limit the area to uh, basically a black and white image or uh, it could be a color image too but it'll just take the the light tones and the dark tones from it uh, to create a mask. So if we click to uh, enable the mask then you can load in uh, an image map to use as a mask. Uh, I'm just going to use something from uh, the Terrain Brushes uh, collection from Mazel Effects, uh, one of the cracks. And uh, with these and the masks in view, uh, you'll find that they do need to be inverted. Uh, and if they're not, you should be able to invert the actual uh, image itself in order to uh, use the mask more effectively. Looks like my scale here is a little bit off. I'm going to go ahead and uh, clear that and probably just uh, increase the size of that terrain. And it still remembers my brush. Um, I am going to change my global, disp global display quality, ecosystem preview, global quality limit, and limit to flat billboards. And it's hard to tell uh, in this case uh, that it is being constrained by the mask. Uh, so what I can do is increase the density and I could even just bring that down to say a plum tree and you can see that it's really only within certain areas that are defined by the mask region. And then we can adjust the fall off a little uh, another thing we can do uh, is tile the mask. Uh, I'm not sure how well that's going to work with the ecosystem painter because it's not constrained to any actual size. It's the full limit of the screen. Uh, so it probably won't work with the global ecosystem mode. But within uh, material ecosystems, that should work uh, f just like it does in the terrain editor. Uh, where it's going to use a repeating tile pattern basically and you paint within that. Uh, so with a good selection of masks you can uh, really create some um, interesting looking ecosystems a lot quicker now uh, than you could in the past. Really taking basically the same brush tools that were available uh, in previous versions of you just in the terrain editor and now bringing them to ecosystems.